Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel and another Halloween makeup tutorial. So for today's video, I want you to create a look that was maybe a little bit less spooky. So if you saw my last video, then you'll know that I created a devil Halloween makeup tutorial, which I'll go ahead and leave a link down below. So I want you to create a mask and I'm actually going into this completely winging it, um, which is a bit scary. Hopefully it won't be too much of a bumpy ride, but I want to tell you my thought patterns are going into this video. So I know that I don't want to completely paint on a mask, nor do I want to create a mask out of detailed intricate lines. Firstly, because just like in my last video, I want this look to be maybe a little bit more toned down than your regular Halloween makeup tutorial. I want this look to be super achievable at home and also to be created out of all makeup products and to create a makeup look along the way. I do have some really pretty gemstone props. I have this gemstone piece that I want to pop on my forehead, but that was super inexpensive I just got them from the $2 shop the second reason is because my hand can sometimes be a little bit shaky so I don't think I'm gonna be able to create detailed intricate lines I think my lines will be fat and chunky and it won't look delicate whatsoever I also have some blue contacts that I want to pop in so I know that I want the color scheme to be blue but other than that, we're just going to be going along with it. Um, of course, you can completely customize this look to suit, you know, your Halloween event. If this isn't spooky enough for you, you could change the color scheme to red. You could pop in some like zombie contacts. You could add some blood dripping from the mask. You can completely customize it. But I hope that the look that I do create gives you some sort of inspiration and you enjoy the video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel before you leave. Check out my social media links below. And let's just go ahead and jump right in. So I am going to pop in some contacts. And just like I explained in my last Halloween tutorial, I do actually wear prescription contact lenses. And I found an optometrist here in Australia that does prescription Halloween lenses. So I'll go ahead and leave them linked down below. And they didn't quite fit me. So if throughout the video, it kind of looks like one eye is drifting off a little, it's the contact lens. <laughs> and my mum and two of my siblings actually have blue eyes. So it was really interesting for me to see what I would look like if I had blue eyes. I'm taking the P. Louise base in the shade Zero to prime the lids today and I'm taking that primer all the way from my inner corner to my hairline because we are going to be really extending that shadow outwards. And having a really light base is going to help intensify the shadows. I'm going to take this bright, fairly light blue shadow from Sugar Peel Cosmetics and I'm applying that with the Sigma blending brush and I'm just packing that on the inner half of my eye. And I'm using tapping motions to ensure that we're getting as much pigmentation from the shadow. The next Sugar Pill Cosmetics shadow I'm going in with is this Royal Blue shade in Velocity and I'm packing that next to the previous shade we used and intensifying it as I go. I'm then applying this outwards to kind of create like a wing shape and then bringing this shadow down to meet my outer corner. And then just going in with some more of the previous blue shadow we used and these we have a softer finer brush and I'm just buffing out that shadow and creating like a really soft blown out look. So I'm dipping into this rich, deep blue shadow from the Magic Palette by Juvia's Place. And I applied this like I would any shadow. I didn't change my technique in any way. But oof, this shadow did not want to work with me today. As you can see, this shadow is super patchy. I don't know what was going on. But today, this shadow was a nightmare to work with. Which is a shame because I really wanted to create a nice gradient from like a light blue to dark blue to maybe a little bit of black but I just had to go straight in with a black shade to fill in those patchy areas and sometimes things don't go to plan and that's okay you just have to keep it moving and learn from your mistakes and I learned not to use that shadow again and you will see that throughout the video the patchiness it does peek through again so I have to go in with more black but for now we are gonna move straight on to creating a half cut crease with some of the NARS soft matte complete concealer in Chantilly I'm just going to take some makeup remover on a cotton tip to remove any shadow below that half cut crease so that we have a clean canvas to work with and no shadow is going to peek through when we go in with the next product. And I'm just going back in with that NARS concealer and then just setting the outer half with some translucent powder before going back in with the previous blue shades that we used to create a really nice blend in that outer corner. 
Going in with the Too Faced Glitter Glue, I'm just applying that on my lid before going in with the Glitter Wrong Cosmetics Glitter in the shade Unicorn Party Hollow. If that name doesn't intrigue you, then I don't know what will, <laughs> but this is just a gorgeous silver glitter with hollow specks throughout it. And I'm just pressing this glitter on the glitter glue. And we don't want a harsh line between the shadow and glitter, so I'm going back in with some of the previous blues that we used to create a really nice gradient. Once again, that dark blue shade, it was causing me all sorts of trouble. The patchiness was peeking through, so I had to go in with more of the black shadow. Even though I didn't particularly want to go in with more black, I did have to, to fill in those patchy areas. I'm going to go ahead and apply some mascara. I will be applying falsies, but just not at this stage because sometimes falsies can irritate my eyes. And I knew with different contacts in and glitter on my lid, I knew that my eyes would just get really irritated. So we're going to be applying falsies a little bit later on. And this is the gorgeous gemstone piece that I want to pop on my forehead. And I knew that I wanted to pop some gemstones down my nose. So I just decided to quickly draw them just to give myself a rough guideline. So I'm just drawing the bottom of that mask shape and I didn't particularly have any idea of what I was doing here but I just decided to draw the mask shape and then go ahead and move on to the face and come back to the mask a little bit later on. And I just have to say throughout editing this video I have been laughing so hard because those contacts have made me look like I have googly eyes and <laughs> I just cannot take myself seriously so I hope you're laughing at it as much as I have been. So there was obviously no point in priming my face, so just going straight in with foundation, I'm taking the LA Girl Pro Coverage Foundation in the shade Fair. And just taking the Sigma Large Shader Brush to get a little bit more precision around the brows and shadow. And I'm just going to quickly set that foundation with some translucent powder before going in and creating a little bit of definition to my cheekbones using the Hoola Bronzer by Benefit. I'm just going in with the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer to warm up my skin a little. So I'm just applying this on the cheek area that isn't being covered by the mask, as well as around the perimeters of my forehead. I'm just going to go in and diffuse that harsh line that we created as a guideline for the mask, because we don't want that line peeking through when we go in with the next product. So I thought that I would extend the shadow down my nose in my inner corner, and I knew that I would apply a gemstone between the shadow to join the mask up. So it's now time to turn this look into a mask. So I'm taking the Super Beauty Hydro Liner in Snow Queen. And I was trying to visualize what this mask would look like. I was a little worried. So I just took a deep breath and I went for it. And halfway through, I regretted it. I was like, oh my god, what am I doing? But then I kept going and in the end, I think it all turned out okay. So I'm literally just painting on this hydro liner with a craft brush that I got from the $2 shop. And then when it comes to my inner and outer corner area, I'm just using a eyeshadow fluffy brush so that we can blend the hydro liner into the eyeshadow and there are no harsh lines. So what I tried to do next is just apply some eyeshadow under my lower lash line like I usually would, but the eyeshadow was not applying over this hydro liner. So I just went in with the Marc Jacobs Highliner Matte Gel Eye Crayon in Out of the Blue and just applied this to my waterline and lower lash line. So I wanted to create some shadow to this mask, but after I saw that the eyeshadow was not applying over this hydro liner, I had to improvise and I took the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Velour Liquid Lipstick in Jawbreaker. I'm then going to mix in a little bit of blue velvet into Jawbreaker to start to create some depth and dimension to this shadow. So I'm just applying this to the bottom area of the mask using a craft brush and then blending it out using the Sigma Cream Color Brush. And then just adding blue velvet by itself to really intensify the edges of this mask. So I went ahead and took some bronzer under the mask and then I wanted to intensify the shadow on the mask even more. So I just went back in with that blue velvet liquid lipstick. And then to create the slight illusion that the mask is off the skin, I'm just going around the very edge of the mask with some concealer. So it was time to stick on the gemstone piece and I was like, yeah, this is going to be like the easiest part of the look, you know, I'll just cut up the little gemstones into sections, stick them on my head, no problem. Yeah, I was very wrong. <laughs> 
So trying to carefully peel off the gemstones while keeping them intact while you have really long nails and then trying to evenly stick them on your skin isn't as easy as I thought it would be. <laughs> but you know what? After a little bit of a challenge, we got there and I love how it looked. And I actually found a few more gemstones literally just lying around my house. So I decided to add to the gemstone piece that I already had on my head and I brought the gemstones down my nose. I'm taking the Colourpop Super Shock Cheek in Flexitarian and I'm just adding that to the high points of my cheekbones to add some more depth and dimension to the look. Finally, time for lashes. So I'm taking the Bold Face Makeup Lashes in the style Spice It Up. I wanted all the attention on the eyes, so I wanted to go in with a nude lip, but nothing too pink, you know. I wanted something that was warm toned, a little bit orange to really complement the blue. So my go-to warm toned nude is the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Velour Liquid Lipstick in the shade Hunty. And then really, I was just having fun with the look, you know. So I went ahead and applied some more gemstones around the mask and just really customized it and made it my own. And what I loved about this look is just how quick it was. It's perfect for a last minute costume. And this is the finished look. And of course, you don't have to wear this for Halloween. You could wear it to a masquerade, dress up party, a festival, wherever you like. I just hope that you enjoyed the video and I really appreciate you watching and all of your love and support. And hopefully I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.